Hello, folks. So I get this question multiple times a day, every single day. What is the best telescope for beginners? And it's not really an easy question. So what I'm going to do is just take you through my own personal experience, the first telescopes I bought and why I upgraded. Now, along with that question, people sometimes throw out a dollar amount and the amount of $400 always seems to come up. And I, I find that interesting because it seems like it's always that amount. That, that, that's the limit. I don't know if that's just the average payroll for some people. Or I, don't, I don't really know why that $400 mark keeps coming up. But I'll cover that too. And just a few hours ago, somebody asked me, well, what's the best scope for visual and taking pictures? And money's not really a problem. And I'll tell you what I told that person. And just so you know, I am not affiliated with any brand. I have no skin in the game. I make no money off of this, so it, it doesn't matter to me what you buy. I, I don't benefit at all from it. But I will tell you the brands I've used in the past, I have good experience with, and I have no problem buying from them again. And one of them is Celestron for mirror telescopes and mounts and Explorer Scientific for refractor telescopes and for astronomy cameras. I have good experience with ZWO. For electronic focusers, I use Moonlight. For filters, um, I've used Astronomic and Optolong in the past. I have good experience with both. And uh, for solar imaging, Daystar filters. Those are the brands I have no problem buying from. All right. So I had to hop on the computer because I no longer own the first two telescopes I, I, I bought. And the first one is, is lost to father time. I don't even remember the brand name. I, I think it was, I bought it maybe 35 years ago. And I wish I still had it, it would be an antique. But this is the second telescope I ever bought. It's the Orion Space Probe. And I bought it in 2005, so that was 15 years ago for $261. And so the price hasn't really gone up that much. I'm looking at OPT. This is the this is the website I usually go to when I want to buy astro equipment. This is the place I look to first. I'm not affiliated with them, so it doesn't matter to me if you go here, but I know a lot of these guys on Instagram. I talk to them and I trust them, so um, you won't have any problem buying from this um, website. And uh, they've got a phone number where you can call if you need to have a, a additional question. So definitely um, come here first. And if you do come here, tell them uh, that Chuck sent you and they'll give you 50 per No, they won't give you 50% off. I'm just kidding. Don't tell them that. In fact, don't even mention my name. They'll probably penalize you. But here's the specs, by the way. Um, and you can see what this scope can do. It can look at the moon, it can look at the planet. You'll see the belts going across Jupiter. You will see the rings of Saturn. I remember all that and the focus held pretty good. I never had a problem with the focus. It, it was a good scope. And the only reason, well, it, it, it falls within that $400 range that people talk about. But the main reason I upgraded is it didn't have a motorized mount objects move across the sky from east to west pretty quickly and you will constantly be be adjusting where the the telescope is pointing just to keep up with the the object you're trying to see so if you if you're a beginner you you want to make things easy on yourself and if you can afford to go with um, a setup that has a motorized mount that is absolutely the thing to do um, as a beginner, you will be penalizing yourself if you don't do that. Um, if you can afford the motorized the motorized mount, I, I would go that way. I think you can still get one within that four hundred dollar range. So, and that that's why I upgraded. And let me take you to the next telescope I bought. Okay, so here is the third telescope and setup I ever owned. It's the Next Star. Ada C made by Celestron and it's way beyond that $400 price range but I just wanted to show you the the third setup 
I ever owned, and I'm, I'm going to go back to that $400 range and see what we can find that's motorized. And um, the sole reason I bought this was because it was motorized. It could keep up with the objects I was looking at. And it was so awesome. Let me tell you, I remember this day like it was yesterday. I pointed this scope at Jupiter, and Jupiter stayed dead center. I didn't have to adjust anything. Uh, it was like I had entered into the modern age. In fact, I remember I went inside the house. I came back out a half hour later and Jupiter was still in my field of view. It was off to the side, but it was still there and I was so excited. I texted my nephew, Jupiter is still there. It, it, just, it was just an amazing experience that I no longer had to manually keep adjusting the, the mount to, to keep up with it. And visually, um, the planets, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, they're small. People are always surprised, even when they look through an 8-inch telescope like this has, uh, an 8-inch mirror, at how small the planets look. But they are so crisp and clear. It's amazing. I've never been able to capture on camera what you can see through an eyepiece with this scope. It doesn't come with the camera um, or the Telrad. It just comes, I think it comes with the diagonal. You can look at the specs on OPT to see what it came with. But I was really happy with this scope. And um, uh, I, I, I did get into astrophotography with it. I did start doing deep sky imaging. Although I, for deep sky imaging, and when you need to do long exposures, um, you are going to need to upgrade the mount. Either add a wedge to convert this into an equatorial mount or upgrade to a Celestron AVX mount. Um, for planets, it's fine the way it is. But for deep sky astrophotography, you, you will need to upgrade because you're probably going to take want to take multi-minute exposures and you'll have trouble with this kind of setup going beyond um, 18 seconds or so because of field rotation. That, that's another topic. So, um, But you can do it. And the only problem with this telescope for, for deep sky is um, the stars may look round in the center, but the farther you go away from the center, the stars, they start to lose their shape. Um, they call it coma, and I've seen that myself with this. And what I would say to that is, who cares, right? You just want to take some cool deep sky photos. And when you start worrying about things being perfect, you know what's going to happen? You're going to want to spend more money on a mount. You're going to want to buy a a better telescope, a better camera, better filters. It's fun to get new stuff, but it, this hobby will take your last dime. It's too late for me. I've gone down that path, but save yourself. Don't worry about perfection. Uh, just have fun and take some cool pictures with it if that's what you want to do. Or for visually, it's fine the way it is. All right, so that was my third scope. Now let's go look for a scope for 400 bucks or less. And by the way, here's all of my telescopes that I've used this year. And you can see, I still use that, that old Celestron Nexstar A to C. It, it still comes in handy for solar system objects. And people get mad at me on Reddit when I talk about this scope. And I call it a beginner setup. But if you look at, if you look at my other setups, I, I still think it's for beginners. But on Reddit, you know... What do they know? They, they think a, a high price tag means it's advanced, but it compared to what I've got going on with this stuff, no, it's, it's not really that advanced. Um, it's a simple setup for and a good starter telescope. Well, it does exist, a motorized telescope for under $400. I found the Celestron 114 LCM for $348. Uh, I might be looking at that one. If I were a beginner, wanted a motorized setup, and Celestron also has another one, the Celestron Nexstar 130 SLT, but that goes up to $500. I noticed the telescope is slightly bigger. They both have 4,000 object databases to help you find objects, but I would look at the specs on these and probably call OPT and tell them what you're looking for and see what they recommend because... You know, I, I would only be reading the same thing you would be reading here. And since I don't have direct experience, I, I don't want to try and sell these to you. But um, 
that that's that's looks like a pretty good price to me for a motorized mount <clears throat> and um for the person who's who didn't seem to have a concern about price he just wanted to be able to view objects and, and take pictures all i did is i just typed um i my reply was check out the celestron edge hd eight inch and he said okay thanks you know, sometimes I wish I was an affiliate because if it's that easy to recommend stuff, <laughs> maybe I could have had a quick sale and made a commission. But the only problem is I didn't get into detail and he didn't ask me for any detail. So I hope he knows to get an equatorial mount with it because I just saw this. I, I mean, I just saw this one and it didn't come with an equatorial mount. This version is an alt as mount and so he wouldn't be able to really do long exposures with this one. So I, I hope he, he asks more questions to wherever he's going to buy from. So well, that's all I got, folks. I don't know if you found this useful or not. Uh, you can ask more questions in the comments. And for anybody else who has experience, please leave comments So uh, and, and help out beginners. All right, I'll see you later. Hello folks, so this is a different kind of video for me. I get this motherfucker. Hello folks, so today... Hello folks, so today I'm gonna do something different. I get this... What I'm gonna do is just tell you my own personal experience and the, the first telescopes... Blah, 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 blah. All I know is my own experience and I think... Uh, so today I'm going to do something different. I get this question multiple times a day, every single day. What is the best telescope for a beginner? So I'm finally going to make a video for it.